Well, as you sit before me today, a graduate of the University of Wisconsin Baraboo Sauk County, you as graduates have demonstrated some remarkable things about yourself. Tenacity, the high value you place on education, and your willingness to put in hard work class after class, month after month. But you've also benefited from the great University of Wisconsin system, whose deep and rich history in this state has allowed you and generations before you to have access to a college degree in one of the world's best public university systems. We give you the opportunity to gain a world-class education. What you do with that opportunity, as you've no doubt learned, is up to you. As president of the University of Wisconsin system for nearly a decade, Dr. Kevin Riley tirelessly promoted this most important Wisconsin idea, that every person in the state deserves access and benefits from this great university system. He advocated for the University of Wisconsin system as a benefit to the state, as an economic engine to the state as well. But he also saw, and I heard this countless times at regent meetings and interacting with him uh, on a regular basis, that he values a liberal arts education. In a time when voices clamor for training graduates for specific jobs and parting them with narrow skill sets, Dr. Riley sees the university as much more than that. It is an incubator for creativity. It is a fertile ground for new ideas. In each of the University of Wisconsin campuses, including our own, is a place where discovery takes place for the sake of knowledge. Discovery that spreads through our state and beyond. If given access and opportunity, University of Wisconsin students can and will do incredible things. We expect that of our graduates. We thank Dr. Riley for his years of service to the University of Wisconsin system when he led the UW through a period of unprecedented growth to reaching that 180,000 students. All of you have benefited from his work. And we are happy to welcome him back to the University of Wisconsin Baraboo Sauk County campus at this time uh, when UW access and opportunity and your own strength and determination have come to fruition as graduates. Please join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, Dr. Kevin Riley, President Emeritus and Regent Professor of the University of Wisconsin System. Dr. Riley. Well, thank you, and what, what a great day. You people really know how to arrange the weather up here in Sauk County. You don't even have a meteorology degree here, do you? Well, maybe that's next. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Tom and uh, all my colleagues uh, here uh, for the opportunity to speak with you today. It's really a, a privilege to share this special uh, celebration. So I do want to start by recognizing all the graduates of the class of 2014. You all have done it. Uh, you've done uh, something that is, uh, you've achieved something that is bestowed finally only still on a very small percentage of the human race. So with your brand spanking new associate degrees, you are mighty accomplished and mighty privileged people. This is also uh, an historic occasion for UW Baraboo Sauk County. For the past eight years, Dean Tom Flager has been the energetic, forward-looking leader of this campus. But for Dean Plager, like you students, there comes a time to move on. So as many of you know, Dean Plager has been named the next president of Lake Superior State University in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. And just as we've been lucky to have him here, they are going to be very lucky. They'll learn soon to have him there. His commitment to students, his passion for the liberal arts, his thoughtfulness, his wisdom will be tremendous assets in his new role. And we, we hate to see him leave the UW family. We thank him for his dedicated service at UW Baraboo Sauk County, and we wish him and Teresa the best for the future. Stand up, Teresa. You deserve this, too. Stand up. Stand up. Very good. So I've always found it interesting when I speak at these commencements that uh, the commencement speaker is charged with telling a uh, large number of students dressed in more or less identical caps and gowns that individuality is going to be the key to their <laughs> success. So uh, hold that thought and we'll come back to it in a little bit. Uh, but don't worry, I won't take uh, too long to give you that or any other advice. Uh, I know from experience what the role of the commencement speaker is at a graduation. It's a little like that of a 
corpse at a traditional Irish wake. You know, you need him to have the party, but you really don't expect him to say very much. So uh, I'll, I'll take my cue from President Lincoln, who said in the opening line of his second inaugural address, quote, at this second appearing to take the oath of office, there is less occasion for an extended address than there was at the first. That's an applause line, folks. <laughs> I assure you that, that I'm fully aware that what Lincoln said in his Gettysburg Address, which turned out not to be true, will be utterly true of my commencement remarks here today. You remember he said, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here. And you departing students especially will little note nor long remember what we say here. But my heartfelt uh, best wishes go out uh, to each of you nonetheless as well as to all the family members and, and friends and others who've waited for this day with almost as much anticipation as you. So make sure to thank those people uh, profusely for all the support and guidance they've given you over the years to get you to this moment. After all, you can't imagine the sense of relief that they are experiencing right now. And actually, because of that, it may be one of your last soft-touch opportunities to ask for money. So you might want to take advantage of that on the way out. So on this day, as you will move your tassels to the other side of your mortarboards, you're gaining a place in the wonderful and dynamic community of University of Wisconsin alumni. You are now alumni and alumni. You're taking your place among some of the world's most capable and most respected citizens. I know that many of you graduating here today have inspiring stories to tell about overcoming significant obstacles to earn your degrees. Some may have had language barriers. Others may have worked extra hard and extra hours to finance your education. And many of you are likely to be the first in your families to earn a college degree. So talk about trailblazers. As college graduates, you are all, by definition, risk takers, and I applaud that. I'm sure there were times along the way that you wondered if the risk was worth it. Even now, I know many of you may be apprehensive about the uncertain economic environment that awaits you. There will always be uncertainties of one sort or another. None of us can possibly know what the next big thing will be, what changes lie over the horizon. Ten years ago, I wager not many of us would have imagined that on such a big day as this, the family video camera would be sitting on a shelf in the closet, and instead this historic occasion would be chronicled by hundreds of cell phones and selfies. I'm here to break it to you that uh, the diploma you're receiving today does not mean that you have all the answers. This, uh, that is not part of the deal when you're graduates. But it does mean you are much better equipped to find those answers or even to ask the hard questions. To help you thrive in whatever future lies over the horizon, the dedicated faculty and staff here at UW-Baraboo have worked hard to arm you with the necessary knowledge and skills and habits of mind to greet each day with confidence and enlightened readiness for what the future with all its unknown challenges might bring. Your fellow students have also played a part in getting you here, whether that's sitting up uh, until the wee hours of the morning arguing the merits of Sigmund Freud versus Carl Jung, or simply going back and forth about what's going on in each other's lives at the Lang Student Center. In the classrooms and labs and elsewhere here at UW-Baraboo, you've had the chance to rub elbows with people from diverse backgrounds who've enriched your experience here with their differentness as you have enriched theirs. Whether you knew it or not, most of you had a big cheering squad behind you all the way. Your family, your friends, your neighbors, and maybe even people you never met. Those who are counting on the knowledge and skills you'll one day bring to the classrooms in Wisconsin, to the construction sites, to the doctor's offices. For those of you who may have lacked that kind of cheering squad, well, even heartier congratulations are due to you. My point is, no matter the, the uncertainties, have faith that you've already passed a major test by getting to where you are today. By committing to do the work, by putting in the time, by your willingness to take on new challenges, to make sacrifices in order to achieve something big, 
by your willingness to consume unbelievably large quantities of Mountain Dew and Red Bull. In all of those ways, you've shown you have what it takes to succeed. Now it's about what you do with what you've got. Years ago, one of those uh, famous Ripley's Believe It or Not cartoons pictured a plain bar of iron worth $5 and pointed out that if you forged that iron into horseshoes, it would then be worth $10.50. If you used the iron for making needles, it would be worth $3,200. And if you turn the iron into watch springs, the value would soar to $250,000. There's a big difference between $5 and $250,000. Again, the difference is what you do with what you've got. Today, as we celebrate your risk-taking, it's also important to remember why you took all those risks in the first place. Yes, getting a good job is part of what's driven you. Uh, you've got to earn a living wage to keep body and soul together, after all. For, for many, there's an equally strong drive to improve lives, to build stronger communities, to expand intellectual horizons, uh, to live a full life. And let me say for the uh, elected politicians that we have here today who we've honored, they have all contributed to the public good in ways that go beyond their own individual lives. And I want to congratulate uh, Dale and Fred, whom I knew well and enjoyed working with, and Mayor Mike, whom I just met, and, and the county board, uh, Marty Krieger, who I used to work with when I was the a chancellor of extension so please pass on my congratulations to him him as well uh, here at, at um, baraboo that sort of spirit of adventure is clearly thriving so in recent years this university added a number of baccalaureate and even a master's collaborate collaborative degree program you do have here uh, as at the uw colleges now the bachelor of applied arts and sciences the baas degree uh, the college's own baccalaureate program uh, you here at Baraboo have implemented the successful Wisconsin and Scotland study abroad program. I don't know why it's not the Wisconsin and Ireland study abroad program, but it's the Wisconsin and Scotland study abroad program. Maybe some of you graduates have participated in some of these activities. Uh, the university's growth is also reflected in a changing campus with the recent groundbreaking for UW Baraboo's first ever residence hall as well as an additional groundbreaking plan in August for a new science facility. And Tom, you were saying that science facility will be where we are sitting today with a wonderful roof deck on it where graduates and the people who come to see them in the future will be sitting uh, to get their degrees. It's a little longer view than we have sitting on the ground right now. So bravo, bravo to those of you here at Baraboo who've been part of that building out. As part of providing a top-notch education for graduates like yourselves, Baraboo is clearly evolving to meet the changing demands of its students, of the region, and of the state. For you personally, it is your thoughtful contributions to the public good that will truly make a difference. Perhaps you'll serve on the school board or write uh, letters to the editor of your local newspaper to express your opinion or post your own blog. Maybe you'll volunteer to build a playground start a nonprofit, or run for public office. Perhaps you'll return to one of our UW system campuses one day as a faculty member, ready to inspire the next generation of college-going students. This is not to suggest that there won't be disappointments or roadblocks along the way. The trick, though, is to know and to believe that there's power in persistence, most especially in the face of withering difficulties. <laughs> It might uh, pay to remember that Dr. Seuss's first children's book was rejected by 23 publishers, that Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team, that most successful business entrepreneurs experience failure on their way to success. In the end, I certainly hope that at the base of what we've provided you is the knowledge and perspectives to help you recognize what is true and good and beautiful in your lives. And that thought brings me uh, to the story of a hotshot uh, Chicago investment banker who was taking a much needed <coughs> vacation in a small tropical fishing hat. While strolling along on the waterfront there, uh, the banker came across a fisherman in a small boat, and his boat had several large fresh fish in it. The banker was impressed by the quality of the fish and asked the, the fisherman how long it had taken to catch them. The fisherman replied, well, only a little while. The banker then asked why he didn't stay out longer and catch even more fish. 
The fisherman replied that he had enough to support his family's immediate needs. The banker then asked, but what do you do with the rest of your time? The fisherman replied, oh, I, I sleep late, I fish a little, I play with my children, I take an afternoon nap with my wife, I stroll into the village each evening where I sip wine and play guitar with my friends. I have a full and busy life, sir. The banker scoffed at that response. He said, look, I'm an Ivy League MBA, and I could help you. You could spend more time fishing and with the proceeds buy a bigger boat. And with the proceeds from that bigger boat, you could buy several boats until eventually you would have a whole fleet of fishing boats. You could open your own cannery. You could make millions. Millions, sir. Then what? To which the investment banker replied, why, why then you would retire. You uh, could move to a small fishing village where you would sleep late, fish a little, play with your kids, take an afternoon nap with your wife, stroll to the village in the evenings where you could sip wine and play your guitar with your friends. The point is, and I want to be careful that you don't get the wrong point from that little story. The point is, be ambitious, by all means. Aim high. We expect that of you. Chase your dreams, but along the way, don't forget to really live to appreciate the things that matter. Live a life with balance and perspective. Graduates, that's my wish for you today, that your UW-Baraboo Sauk County education helps you find a balance and perspective in your life that is uniquely yours, despite the identical caps and gowns you're wearing. And since we began with President Lincoln, let's conclude with him. May you continue to tackle every exciting opportunity ahead of you with daring and confidence dedication. I also hope that you do that guided by the better angels of your nature, as Lincoln called them. I hope that your education here at UW-Baraboo Sauk County has given those better angels reason to reign and roam across all your ambitions and dreams. May your futures be worthy of the best of those dreams. Way to go, graduates. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I have to tell you, it's been a privilege and an honor to serve under your leadership of this great university, and I want to thank you on behalf of all the faculty and staff of all the things you've done for the University of Wisconsin system uh, and for coming out to be our commencement speaker today. I'd like to present you with a commemorative plaque uh, from this event. <laughs> 